thought today I'd try out a new video format so you can see the background is different as well. Um, usually I make very serious videos but I thought today I'm just gonna sit down with my cup of tea and then we can talk about something that I really wanted to talk about for a long time but never actually made a serious video about it. This question is why did I become an engineer? Um, it's something a lot of people ask me whenever they find out that I'm an engineer, um, that I graduated from Oxford and this is usually one of their first questions, why an engineer? And especially among some older generations, their question would be, but you're a girl, why are you an engineer? And so today I thought it would be just a chill video where I would sit down and talk about, you know, my motivations and all of that. But first of all, if you like this format, then do let me know and I can make more of these videos in the future where I just sit down in front of the camera and talk about a topic that you guys might ask me very often or something that I like to talk about in a more casual way than my usual videos. So, um, first of all, the reason why I became an engineer wasn't something like um, when a lot of people have this uh, true calling uh, when they are like small kids and they knew at the age of four that they wanted to be an engineer or a doctor or whatever. For me it was a bit different. Um, since I was very young I was actually generally a good student, especially up until the age of around 12 and 14. I was a really really good student so all of my subjects uh, were well, basically the equivalent of AIDS and I was always top student in my class, top student in my school. I went to a lot of national competitions, a lot of competitions in the school I won as well. And this was a lot of different subjects. It could be maths, physics, um, there were a lot of competitions in um, literature and all of that. But I just decided that I wanted to go towards a specialised class which was more um, kind of like maths, physics, um, basically all the STEM subjects, biology and chemistry as well. And the reason is that even though I was a good student in literature, grammar, history and all of that as well, I just found that I was um, a bit more talented in the STEM subjects and I also enjoyed them a lot more. And at that point I really didn't know what I wanted to do in the future. Even with that, you know, uh, being in STEM. Back then I think I did receive a lot of comments about, you know, you're a girl, why are you going in STEM? Uh, but it didn't really affect me. I think at that time I just never thought about it and I brushed all of that off. So I just knew what I liked so I decided to do that and I didn't care about what anyone else thought. After a while I realized that it's uh, quite limited. Um, how good I am with just pure maths and physics. Before that I understood everything from the um, fundamentals and there were a lot of things that I just understood and knew how to explain, how to do myself. But when it came to like high school, I started falling behind slightly. So it wasn't actually that I became a bad student, it was just I was not as outstanding anymore. At the age of, I think, 16, that's when I um, went to this competition that was a bit different than the previous ones. So usually the competitions, you know, would be like solving exercises and solving questions, um, which are really challenging questions and they, they need you to understand the concept very deeply and be able to actually solve the questions in very creative ways. But um, so somehow I was not able to do that. But this competition, it was called the um, International Young Physicist Tournament. Um, well, the Hungarian version would be the Hungarian um, Young Physicist Tournament. And that was a research-based competition. So you would get a area of research, you would research it and then report your findings. And then that's how you compete with other people to basically compete with the quality of your research. I remember thinking like, this is something very involved, I don't think I can do it myself, 
but still the experiments themselves are designed to be something that you can do at home as well so I just decided to to enter that competition and then after that I entered another which was the international uh, conference of young scientists um, and that was similar where I basically used the research I used for this other competition and that is a very long way of saying that I realized at that point that it was not the kind of usual question solving that appealed to me but it was more kind of the real life application of physics and maths that was really exciting to me but at that point again I still didn't know what I wanted to do I tried out a lot of different things so I had projects going on I had um, I even thought about you know like I really like sewing clothes and designing clothes and I made my own like fashion show in the school to try out that as well to see if I would enjoy it enough for it to be a career and not just a hobby and it's the same with teaching English I tried that out as a volunteer as well but in the end I kind of thought that um, I enjoyed maths and physics a lot and I would really miss it if I didn't do it so at that point I still wasn't 100% convinced but I already had a lot of experience um, you know doing things researching um, I also published papers so because of that I thought it's kind of a waste because it is something that I'm very good in to be able to go to international competitions I won silver medal um, I represented Hungary at the international competitions as well that's something that's actually really outstanding and it's it would be quite a waste for me to just um, let that go so because of that I decided to apply for engineering because in my mind back then in my 17 year old mind um, engineering was physics and maths mushed together so I was good at physics good at maths liked doing things in real life so engineering it is I personally didn't know what exactly an engineer does but then because of that I applied to a lot of universities that had like kind of general engineering schemes and Oxford was one of that I remember Bath was something similar as well but other than that I actually applied to like mechanical engineering um, courses but I remember thinking like I, I actually don't know what I want to do but with an engineering degree there is a lot of stuff I can still do later on and I remember um, you know my first year of university I still wasn't sure and things started to get harder and harder um, and because I wasn't sure about being an engineer it was even harder to motivate myself to study but then I got through that I actually joined the project well started the project where we uh, designed and built a formula student car so that is kind of a formula one style of electric racing car but I absolutely loved it and for me it was kind of building a community around um, an engineering thing which was really really good and to be honest like looking back I think that was the thing that actually helped me to be even more enthusiastic about uh, engineering and about having a career in engineering so uh, since then I've worked well since graduating I've worked as an engineer and um, I personally think that it's something that really suits me so I always tell companies at interviews that my dream is uh, to become someone in senior management in an engineering firm and that's something that's really really important for me it's not enough for me if it's just a company selling engineering products because that's a sales company but it should be a company who's actually actively researching, developing new things, uh, improving on their products day by day and not just selling things. So then again, through my um, kind of my experiences so far, I've also noticed that I really miss research and development if I don't work in kind of that field. And by that, I don't mean that I have to do the kind of very theoretical or nitty gritty details myself I think that has its own charm but I really like to see kind of the system level view of the products and how things are made so overall I think the reason why I became an engineer was kind of just because I was good at it and I enjoyed maths and physics 
but I'm very glad that it turned out this way because personally I don't feel discouraged when people told me back then like um, you shouldn't become an engineer because you're a girl uh, and all of that but yeah I can I, I think I can actually make another video on this if you're interested about my experiences as a woman in STEM or a woman in engineering as I said I really enjoy it and I've met so many amazing people along the way so I I personally think that it was really worth it to uh, choose this path and I usually tell the students who are good at maths and physics and don't know what they want to do is consider becoming an engineer because with an engineering degree you can do so much so you can still transition to a lot of different jobs so I definitely think that being an engineer is amazing I would really really recommend it to everyone who feels passionate about you know solving real life problems and maths physics and as I said, it doesn't have to be necessarily just sitting down and solving problems, solving maths questions, solving physics questions, but it's rather, you know, the ability to solve problems and seeing through systems and wanting to improve the world around you. So that's where I began. And because I didn't have that confidence uh, when I was in high school, because I thought that I wasn't outstanding enough when um, it came to just solving questions in the classroom. Um, I thought that, you know, I was not good enough for being an engineer or a lot of people would say like, why don't you just do maths or physics? But yeah, I, I think that it was a good choice becoming an engineer. I don't think I would have enjoyed um, doing very theoretical things or just pure research. And being an engineer actually allows me to do um, both at once to enjoy the aspect of research and development but also to see kind of the real life applications of it, how cells work and now I'm currently in a role where I actually see how things are tested before they go out to a customer and um, I'm able to see you know the software development side of things as well so I'm really fortunate to be able to do that and um, yeah, I think that is it. Um, that's all I can say of why I became an engineer and how I enjoyed the process so far. Just let me know in the comments below if you think that this style of video is good, if you enjoy it, because I had a lot of comments um, saying like a lot of videos are very serious and they would love to see some videos which are a bit more personal and where I talk about my feelings or where I talk about my experiences in a more light-hearted way. So um, yeah, let me know if, if you enjoyed this and I'll make some more of these videos in the future then. Um, so subscribe to see those videos, like this video to show your support, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye!